Goodness gracious, there are a lot of Marvel rumors making their way around the internet lately. In this video, I want to break a lot of them down, including what is going on with Venom and Deadpool in Spider-Man 3, and what exactly is going on with Sony and Marvel and the Spider-Man character anyway. Plus, we got some set photos from the Black Widow movie. I think shooting already, and there's some rumors about that film as well. Haven't you heard the rumors about Marvel? It's like the news, but for nerds. Subscribe so you never miss an episode. Today's shout out goes to Folklore Ian. Indeed, Mark Millar and Brian Hitch did create the Ultimates universe. We'll do another nerd card question at the end of this video. What's up, everybody? Happy Wednesday to you. I'm, of course, Josh. This is the Den of Nerds. And man, the rumor mill is uh, doing whatever the rumor mill does. Milling? milling rumors out all over. Let's start with the Black Widow movie and now this film is shooting like right now which is crazy. We thought this was going to be shooting later this year but there are actual set photos of Scarlett Johansson as Black Widow. Here's a couple of the photos right here. Long red hair, fully red hair. Very crazy stuff. I'm pretty excited to see her looking like this in the film. Now we've speculated a lot about what time period this will be in and there are reports out there that the film is before all of the Avengers movies, that this, this film takes place way back in the day. I've even heard rumors that it's going to take place between Infinity War and Endgame and it all has to do with Natasha training up a new Black Black Widow. The safe money is on it being a prequel. Like it's probably gonna take place way back in the day, but possibly explain some really interesting things about the Natasha Romanoff character that we did not get in a lot of the other movies. Now the coolest rumors with regards to the Black Widow movie all have to do with David Harbour. The actor that's most notably known for his role in Stranger Things and most infamously known for that Hellboy movie that was apparently really bad. It's like so clutch for him that he got this role before the Hellboy movie came out. But yeah, the actor has been talking about the film, talking about the director, how character driven the story is going to be, but he's also been slipping up a tittle bit, a tittle, a tittle bit. But he's also been slipping up a little bit, saying things like, I'm glad that thing is going to be coming into the Marvel Universe, which sent the whole internet on a tirade, thinking that David Harbour will be playing the thing in Black Widow. And there are rumors dating back even further that think he will be the taskmaster in the Black Widow movie. Now, The Thing, despite being kind of a cool idea and David Harbour seeming like he would be actually a pretty good fit for that character, is pretty dang unlikely. Considering that the movie is going to take place way back in time in the MCU, at least likely to take place way back in time in the MCU, and the Fantastic Four have not been introduced at all, very unlikely that The Thing will be in that movie. Taskmaster's more of a safe bet. I think David Harbour could crush it as the Taskmaster. It would be very interesting to see how they would tie that in to the Red Room, to Natasha Romanoff's history as a spy. Very interested to see if that happens. But the news out there is that this movie's officially shooting. Expect a lot more set photo leakage to be happening and more and more information about this movie, including what role David Harbour will actually be playing to be coming out relatively soon. And let me know what you think about the rumors too. The, the rumors, is he gonna be Taskmaster? Is he gonna be the thing? Is there something else that he could be? Okay, so the big story, the crazy rumors that are out there, the reason you clicked on this video is all because of Venom. Venom. There's a lot of rumors that Venom will be in the third Spider-Man movie that will be produced over at Marvel. And before we go any further, I just want to say the name Roger Wardell. Roger Wardell is the name of someone who is now an infamous leaker of Marvel information. We talked about some of the stuff he leaked yesterday. He did a big leak on Reddit and had a lot of tweets that were deleted and that Reddit post was deleted as well and this all had to do with Marvel's phase four a lot of information about Norman Osborn cosmic Avengers go watch the video I did yesterday to break all of that stuff down but this guy just keeps on leaking stuff and literally as I was editing the show yesterday he leaked some very interesting information that shot down a rumor about Deadpool and confirmed something crazy about the Venom character. On the heels of a rumor that Deadpool would be joining up with Spidey in the third Marvel Spider-Man film, he shot it down and said that Deadpool would be treated just in solo movies, just like he was in the X-Men universe. And he also said that Sony desperately wants the Venom 
Venom character and Tom Hardy's Venom to be in the third of the Marvel Spider-Man movies. This spawned a bunch of crazy rumors and speculation about what was going on with Sony and Marvel. I think it's pretty obvious that Sony would like Tom Hardy's Venom to show up in a Marvel movie. I think they've wanted that for a long time. The crossover opportunities are crazy. I mean, the film itself that they did the crossover in would be huge. They'd be able to, you know, do a bunch of publicity for that, get a lot of butts in the seats. On top of that, tying the Tom Hardy Venom somehow into the MCU, having him have some interactions with Spider-Man just brings more value to that character. It sort of establishes him even more and perhaps helps the franchise and the Sony Marvel universe that they are building over there with all of the Spider-Man villains. And since the story broke yesterday, I've seen a lot of confusion about what exactly is the arrangement that Marvel and Sony have. I've seen some people reporting that it's a five movie contract. I've seen some people reporting that it is a six movie contract. Jeremy Conrad over at MCU Cosmic does a pretty good breakdown of this, citing different examples of, you know, Feige and Tom Holland saying different things that, that kind of hint towards five movies or six movies. Now, from my understanding, and, and this was established pretty early on, I think the contract is for six movies, but I did think that after five movies, they went back to the drawing board to sort of renegotiate the contract. And I believe the reason that this was put into the contract is so that Marvel and Sony would have a lot of time to plan not only how they would approach this last Spider-Man movie, but how they were going to approach all of the movies after that. And so you have to imagine that if Sony's going to pull back the Spider-Man character, Marvel would definitely want to know that in their final Spider-Man movie to give him a proper send-off from the MCU to either kill him or send him into the Venomverse. Equally important for Sony, they would want to know, you know, how is this going to tie into our stuff? What are we going to start planning now for our Spider-Man films if we decide not to continue this arrangement with Marvel. So that's legitimately what I think is going on. I think it's a six film contract, but after five movies, they renegotiate. So the, the next contract, if there is one, will be finalized before the sixth movie comes out. But either way, the sixth movie's coming out. Hope that makes sense. Now, as I said in the show yesterday, and as I will continue to say, I truly believe that this deal is sort of already finalized. Marvel and Sony have already talked about a lot of this stuff, and I'm talking all the way back to that Amy Pascal interview where she made Kevin Feige cringe and look really uncomfortable as she said stuff about how it is possible that Tom Hardy and Tom Holland do meet up in a Spider-Man movie, that they're building a universe for Tom Holland to play in over there at Sony. I think even way back then, Feige and Pascal had had conversations about the multiverse and how this was a possible solution for all of the problems and all of the wants of both studios. And using the multiverse as a segue between like an Ultimates universe and a regular universe and multiple different versions of Spider-Man, it has comic book precedence. I mean, the Miles Morales character, the Spider-Men run by Brian Michael Bendis, which by the way, did have Mysterio coming to our universe and opening up a gateway that our Peter Parker then took into the Ultimates universe. Yeah, a lot of this stuff has precedence and it's worked before to have these kind of solutions. I believe that Marvel desperately wants Tom Holland to stay in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I think they'd love for him to be a member of the Avengers moving forward and eventually becoming like an older Peter Parker in that universe. I think that would be super clutch for them. However, maybe even more than they want that, I believe they want Norman Osborn. This is something they've wanted since the very first Avengers movie. I believe that the period in comics known as Siege with the Dark Avengers, where Norman is in charge of everything, I think that's a time period that Kevin Feige is pretty fond of in the comic books. And I think it's something he really wants to do in the MCU. And we've talked about that ad nauseum. I mean, I did a show about that on Friday and technically talked about it again yesterday. Norman Osborn and the Dark Avengers, there's way too much smoke in the rumor mill for there not to be some fire there. Marvel wants Norman Osborn and Sony would have to allow them to use that character. And so Sony, once maybe a version of Spider-Man in their thing, maybe they want Tom Hardy to be able to tango with Tom Holland and have a Spider-Man interaction, and Marvel wants Tom Holland to continue and wants Norman Osborn, perhaps there's an arrangement there. Perhaps there is a deal that has already been established and is being tweaked as we speak. At least that's what I think. That's how I read all of these rumors. I would not be surprised if Tom Hardy's Venom does show up in the third Spider-Man film, but if he does, that would come right along with Norman Osborn being established in the MCU and Tom Holland's Spider-Man staying in our universe. The, the, the MCU, I mean, when I say our universe. Either way, guys, that's all of the rumors and reports that are going on 
on out there. It's really crazy with this dude leaking all of this stuff. Apparently this guy's pretty accurate with stuff. So we're taking what he says and then sort of running with it and speculating about it ourselves. So let me know what you think about all of this in the comment section below. Now let's check the nerd card before we get out of here. I want to know, according to this Roger Wardell guy, who created Rocket Raccoon in the Marvel Cinematic Universe? This is another thing that he tweeted about recently, so I wanna know if you've been paying attention to all that craziness. Who invented Rocket Raccoon in the MCU? Answer that question in the comments section below. As I always say, I hope you're having an awesome and a nerdy day, and I'll see you in the next video.